5 one home of the Breakfast Club, Angie Martinez, and that hip hop and RB, it's your main man, M Easy, and we're back again. Another installment, it's the Sunday sit down, and sitting across from me is a hip hop legend. Uh, listen, I, I, I can't do her enough justice, so I'm just gonna say it. Roxanne Shante is in the building. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Well, thank you, thank you, sweetie, I appreciate it. How you been? I've been absolutely great. I can't complain. I work all the time. I mean, it's a blessing. Okay. Now, I, I recently heard you, you had a marriage uh, proposal. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I, yeah. 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 Yeah? Yeah, that's all we're going to say about that? Yeah? Yeah. I oh. mean, yeah. Oh, there it yeah. goes. There it goes. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I mean, it's it's not my um, it's not my first marriage. It's my first, but it's okay. <laughs> Listen, it, listen. It doesn't matter as it doesn't matter how many times it takes you, as long as you get it right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I feel like you know, marriage is almost like you know, getting to the championship. You know, you just definitely got to get a ring, and you know, I mean, you know, between, I don't know who got more rings, me or Pat. But, you know, uh, what he got? He, I think he got 11. I mean, I might get that before it's all over. Woo! That talk, that talk. Now, listen, um, it's your main man, M. Easy, the Sunday sit down. Now. The state of hip-hop. I'm not going to just ask you the state of hip-hop because that's just an easy question. Okay. Now, the Juice Crew, yes, you're sir. a part of one of the biggest hip-hop battles in the history of hip-hop. Yes. You guys survived that. Yes. In this element of hip-hop, recently, Ja Rule, after 50 Cent, Crickets, oh, Meek Mill, I mean, oh, it's not done, man. it's not done, but the fat lady, he's getting ready. Do you think you, your battle would still be, would te stand as test of time as, the, as these battles did. Absolutely. I think what it is is the fact that when it comes to a battle, it's all about how quick your response is and how quick-witted your response is. Okay. You know, I don't think that you're supposed... It's almost like being in a fight. If you're in a fight, you're not going to allow the person to hit you twice before you hit them back. You know, as soon as they hit you, you got to hit them back. And I think, you know, a battle is just like a fight. And you're supposed to be able to do that. You know, you know how to take a few blows and then you got to know how to give a few blows, you know. And as for Meek, I feel like... Everyone has to suffer some type of loss in order to appreciate your wins. So mm -hmm. we'll just take that as this might be one of those, and then the win will be even bigger when it comes back around. Wise words from Roxanne Chate. Now, in that beef, you you were the one female that KRS went at. Like, yes. How would you got to be a different kind of chick to come back with the bars that you had? Like. Well, I How did you feel about him coming to you, the one female in the situation? Well, I mean, when you're part of a crew, I think everyone, no one is exempt from beef when it comes okay. to your crew. I don't think there's anyone like, okay, listen, we're not going to do this to her because she happens to be a girl. In all reality, I came into hip-hop not just to be a great female rapper, but just to be a great rapper, period. So I think in the early part of my career, they really didn't see me as a girl. They just see me as Shantae. You know, gotcha. I think that's the title that I had was like, oh, yeah, that's Shantae. I didn't, you know, they didn't really say, okay, yeah, that's that girl. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't come into the industry to be that girl. You know, I came in the industry to be that one. And I think that's the reason why I was like so aggressive. So I guess he felt like, look, I ain't going to pull no punches with her either. Look, she could get one too. <laughs> Listen, she's not lying. Okay. <laughs> now, now, as you speak about MCs, give me your top five MCs of all time. What's what are you who are you listening to and who did you listen to? Okay, um, I don't have they're not in any specific order. Okay. Because they're all my hip hop brothers. It would be like asking me to choose my top five brothers. Gotcha. And my family members. And so I'm not able to just do that. But I would have to say Kane, G Rap, Shan, MC Shan, um, believe it or not, KRS one. And wow. rock him. Wow. Yeah. Really? That that's really? that's gotta be surprising to go out to have someone that went at you so hard for to, to put them in your top five. Well, I mean, in all reality, just because that's just like two boxers. Just because yes, you had a, right. a fight, I mean, that didn't mean that he wasn't a great boxer. Gotta respect you know what I'm saying? After, absolutely. You know, absolutely. it is what it is. And I'm one of those people that believes in giving credit where credit is due. And and he definitely did the damn thing. I mean, you know. He's, I mean, he's still the one. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> now, um, how do you feel about the show Power? You know 50 Cent's behind yes. Empire. Yes. How do you feel about Power? I love Power. Really? Yeah. Why everybody, why everybody seem like... I mean, I think because Power has this depiction of not really being a real depiction of the music industry. It's like a... a, a what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? A drama... A dramedy. Well... 
Wait. You have me confused here. Power is the one that 50 has, and Empire is the one that's about... That's it, the other way around? I think you said... Oh, I'm sorry, around. I'm sorry. Not the 50 Cent one, the, the Empire. Okay, Empire. Sorry. Okay, um, with um, Empire, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Taraji. I feel like maybe I can identify with her character, and that's the reason why okay. I really enjoy Empire, because I'm one of those that, you know, has definitely taken the, um, the sacrifice for others to be successful. Gotcha. And then, you know, to come back and see that everyone is doing well, you kind of come back with a little bit of cookie and you're like, okay, well, listen, so what part is mine? So what do I get from this? You gotcha. know, so I can identify with her on, on quite a few levels, you know, um, from, the, from her children and, you know, every different thing else. So I think that's what I really like about it is because I can identify with the cookie character. Gotcha. I, think, I think we all have a little cookie in us. Next question is about the NWA movie. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Give me your thoughts about it, because that must be, for you, seeing that movie, it's got to be like reliving all sorts of wild memories. You know, that time period. I, I actually, I lived in California for a little while during that time, and uh, from the swap meets to the helicopters at night to being up on Crenshaw, and it brought back a lot of memories. What it did do, you know, that I'm very thankful for is it actually exposed a lot of the industry situations where people thought certain things were a certain way just because you've seen someone with videos or you've seen them on TV you thought that their life was a certain way it showed how difficult it is behind the scenes you know with the with the prolonging of contracts mm -hmm. and and being the person who does the most or you know like especially for those who do the writing and the production and then not being able to benefit from all that because five people are in the studio you're the only one who wrote rhymes but five people are on the album you're like, hold up. So they get credit because they happen to be in the studio at the time when this was done. So yeah, I can, I can, um, I, I, I really, yeah, that. I can appreciate that. I, I like the fact that they exposed that. I, maybe I wish they would have went in a little further, but the fact is, I think it was an eye opener for the next generation who went to see, who can kind of understand, like, oh, so all that glitters really mm -hmm. isn't gold, and you know, look how dirty they did him. And it also shows that in the end, you know, people can do certain things to you, but you just gotta sit back and wait because your time will come. What's meant for you is meant for you. Got you. Now, with that said. There's a lot of uh, biographies being made with the hip-hop. Do you think we we're ever going to get one on this side? We had Biggie. Yeah. Now, I mean, the Juice Crew could be a, a, a dope movie. Yes, that just yes. Even just that battle alone has so many layers to it. It yes. would be a dope movie. Yes. I asked you that to say, who would you want to play you in a biopic? Wow. Kiki Palmer. Oh, I love me some Kiki too. I Kiki Palmer, I think she has the she has that charisma, she has that style. I could definitely see her as a Roxanne Shante, as a young Roxanne Shante. Absolutely. L Listen, if they're gonna cast for that movie, I want my my dibs, fam. She just said Kiki Palmer. Yeah, I want I want it. Yeah. Because I was here when they made that decision. See how that goes? <laughs> see how that goes? I got Roxanne Shante in the building. It's a Sunday sit down. It's your main man. I'm easy now. I may be out of line, but. Do you, are you still spitting? You was, was, oh, were well, you going to ask me that? I mean, can I get some bars? <laughs> oh, look at you, look at you, look at you, babe. I'm officially retired. I mean, George still shoots around every once in a while. Oh, does he? You got to. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess because I was known to be a, a, a freestyle rapper mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of people want to understand, like, what was the whole concept of what I consider to be a freestyle, which I don't think a lot of artists do today. So, okay, so this brings me to our, my Drake question. How you feel about Drake not writing his? Um, well, today's hip-hop is not really about who wrote it. It's about who presents it and how it's presented. So I think that people just made too big of a deal about the fact that he didn't write his own rhymes. This wasn't a park jam where he stole somebody's rhyme book and then he got up there and he said mm -hmm. they rhymes. You know, this wasn't a, a Sugar Hill Gang, Grandmaster Kaz, can never be relived again situation. Gotcha. You know what I mean? This wasn't that. This was a, a situation where, as an artist, he was presented with something and he did it very well. I think that he did a great job. I mean, I couldn't see anybody else saying them and making it as successful. There it goes. Right? I from from a great it. MC in her day. She said it. So you guys, back up off my guy Drake, fam. Okay? It's over for y'all. Roxanne Shante in the building. Give them your Instagram, your Twitter, everything, how they can get in contact with you and all that other, other great stuff. Absolutely. my um, Everything is under the letter I, the letter M, Roxanne Shante, all one word. That's I am Roxanne Shante, and that's on my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, my everything. Thank you for coming by. Well, thank you for having me, it, it, it was It was a great 
um, conversation. I enjoyed it. I learned something. And congratulations again on the wedding, whenever that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put my gum back in my, in my mouth. Roxanne, shout out to the building. One more time, thank you for coming through. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Bye.